Hello, everyone. This is Amy from Alpha Advisors. We are supporting many applicants to top MBA for more than 15 years. Recently, we are lots of inquiries and consultation for MBA applications for 2025 intake. And today, we have a man, an amazing guest, uh, Meg, from Stacy Blackman Consulting, which we are working with for supporting more applicants in Japan and all over the, all over the world. Meg is form, is former uh, admission of Chicago Booth MBA, and she served as a key member, having viewed over 20, sorry, 2,000 applications from mm -hmm. all backgrounds and very, very skilled MBA counselor. And today we're gonna go over how to actually get into MBA, top MBA schools focusing on extracurricular activities. And we are very, I'm very excited about this opportunity to having this uh, webinar. Meg, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and hello to everyone. So as Emmy said, I'm going to talk about extracurricular activities. This is a little bit about me. As Emmy mentioned, I worked at Chicago Booth. I also worked at the University of Notre Dame in their graduate business programs. Um, and I've helped a lot of clients over the years, um, not only in my time at those institutions, but as an educational consultant, um, particularly focusing on the MBA world starting in 2017. So I've been doing this for quite some time. Um, as Emmy said, I, I read thousands of applications while I was at Booth. Um, and since since 2017, as an educational consultant, I've helped hundreds and hundreds, probably close to a thousand at this point, um, applicants get into their dream schools. So that the top, of course, um, 10 schools, but um, in, in particular, the M7 schools. So I'm sure that's all, um, those are all the schools that you all are interested in getting to know a little bit more. So I'm happy to be here to shed a little bit of light. Um, I have my own MBA, of course, um, and live in Charlotte, North Carolina um, with my family, which is why it is so dark here. So I apologize for the background, but um, it's eight o'clock at night here. So it's it's a little dark. So I'm doing my best. So hopefully you can still see me enough. So let's jump into the important part and why, of course, you're here tonight, which is to understand a little bit more about your extracurricular activities and why they matter, why they're important, um, and how you can use some of the things that you've done that you may think or you may not think be are important, but they actually are. So part of the reason behind MBA programs really wanting to understand, you know, what you've done outside of your professional um roles and outside of your classroom activities is they, they'd love to understand how are you a good role model? Who are you as a person? And what are the things that you do that really excite you and make you tick? How do you spend your time? You can learn a lot about a person, as I know all of you know, um, just by asking them, you know, what do you like to do for fun? Um, volunteering is a really great aspect. And so, you know, whether that's, you know, one of them in the United States that's very familiar or very popular is Habitat for Humanity. Um, there are a lot of uh, a lot of my clients right now working um, in the mental health space, as that's a conversation that I think we've all started having since COVID um, is really how are we handling tough situations. Um, so a lot of my clients from a volunteer aspect are working in that space. So it shows leadership. It, it's an opportunity for you to, you know, kind of get your arms around a large project or an initiative um, that you're passionate about and really showcase um, your leadership skills and your ability to take a large group or even a small group of people and direct them. Um, being involved, of course, also shows a commitment. So it's it's a commitment to something that's bigger than you. And I think sometimes we we probably all get a little bit um, hyper focused on what's most important to us in the moment, whether it's our career, um, the academic aspect. But being involved outside of those pieces really shows a school that you are you have an understanding of how to kind of get outside of that bubble and outside of yourself. Um, as you probably all know or, or may know, these schools, um, particularly in the United States, um, place a huge emphasis on community. And so they want to know that you're going to be the kind of person who is committed to their community. Um, one thing that I've noticed with, with some clients is that they don't feel that anything art related. So 
dance, um, art shows, any of anything that's creative, um, a lot of times they'll leave that out of the conversation. And I say, please bring it in because it, it really shows um, it shows that sort of commitment to your passion and to your work and to um, a team, a large group. Um, and so, you know, I love I love having that be a part of uh, those extracurriculars and that conversation. And of course, sports. Right. I mean, there's nothing that showcases leadership and teamwork um, quite as as easily as being an athlete uh, does. So that's something that that's part of the conversation, um, you know, the other thing that extracurriculars do um, from a an ad com standpoint is it tells them, look, I understand how to prioritize my time. I can be a professional. I can I can commit to um, you know doing what I need to at work and um, and you know being a, a good friend, being a good you know son, daughter, husband, wife, whatever. But I also can balance my time enough to be committed to this extracurricular activity, playing the violin, you know, volunteering, whatever the case may be. So it shows them that you have that ability to multitask and to really prioritize all of the things that are important to you in your life. Um, you know, I mentioned community service and, and athletics, this could be sports leagues, but the other thing I love um, candidates to think about is, what kind of pro bono work do they do? So I think it's it's interesting because when you sort of get into your late 20s, people start to come up with great ideas for businesses um, or they discover a business that they love, but it's fledgling and it needs help. Um, any pro bono work that you're doing, anything that you're kind of dabbling in and you're, you're helping a new business kind of get on their feet, um, that is an extracurricular, that, that free work that you're doing outside of all of the other things that you're doing, that's part of the extracurricular conversation, or it could be a family business, right? So um, I have uh, had several clients come through um, the Stacey Blackman pipeline who have been working in their family business since they were kids. That's all part of this conversation. And it, and it um, really gives the admissions committee an understanding of, of who they are. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the sports, um, the sports aspect, but think about clubs too. So when you were in your undergraduate um, experience, what were some of the clubs that really got you excited and um, that you enjoyed? What were some of the clubs where you were either a participant or you were a leader? Um, did you help them take their club from, you know, one or two or three members to 50 members over the course of your time during your undergraduate experience. So there are a lot of ways in which a club can show um, commitment, leadership, consistency, et cetera, um, and of course, responsibility. So think about those clubs um, that you are a part of as an undergraduate. And then, of course, part-time jobs. Um, I think, you know, there are there's a lot to be said, um, particularly when a student is going through the college experience and they're working a part-time job. I mean, that is, I did it. I know a lot of people who have done it. It's not easy to do. Um, it shows balance. It shows your ability to, you know, prioritize and to make sure that you're getting all the things done that need to get done. Um, being a teacher's assistant, that's a great example that shows your love and your commitment for education, for that, you know, that faculty member. I'm, I'm sure we all have that story of a faculty member who, you know, doesn't trust students necessarily that easily. And so when you were a teaching assistant for that particular faculty member, faculty member, you know, that shows uh, your ability to build a relationship with someone to make a connection. Um, and of course, to, you know, be resilient in a moment where, you know, you're a teacher's assistant for 100, 200, 300 students um, in a particular area of study. So that all shows beautifully. Um, so we talked a lot about, you know, jobs, we've talked about clubs, um, sports, and of course, you know, think about membership too. So, you know, there are a lot of different um, memberships that um, that you can be a part of, you know, various clubs, various groups, yes, but, you know, what are you doing um, that that may not be on your radar is something that's extracurricular, it could be part of a church, um, you could be, you know, volunteering every Sunday um, with, you know, with your aunties or something like that, right? Like, what are you doing in addition to all the things that you do that you may not think matters, but it really does end up showing who you are as a person. Um, one other thing to think about 
there's always an opportunity, I think, in the professional realm to sort of volunteer. Um, and that could mean, you know, it, sort of indirect mentorship. So you could notice that someone on your team is new, um, maybe they're right out of college, and you sort of take them under your wing and serve as, you know, an unofficial mentor um, or an unofficial kind of supervisor to, to their work and, and helping them learn and learn the, um, you know, sort of the way that workplace works, some of the cultural aspects, that type of thing. So think about um, those informal ways in which you can lead and showcase responsibility, but also look for those opportunities at work um, to, to do that on a more formal basis. You know, volunteer for opportunities to organize different groups or clubs within your organization, your larger organization, um, because that not only does that show well from a professional standpoint, but it definitely represents you well um, from the adcom standpoint. So think about that too, um, that, you know, what you're doing within work that still falls under extracurricular. If it's not part of your regular job and it's not part of what you are um you know, you're, you are evaluated on every quarter or every year. Um, it definitely is extracurricular work. So think about that. Um, and then lastly, certifications and licenses. These are things that you may think don't matter, but if it's something that you're on the fence about pursuing, um, you know, the Series 7 is a great example, the CFA exam, CPA. These are things that they're all um, data points that add up to the larger picture of your candidacy. So if you're on the fence about it and you feel like it's something that you can do and you want to do in advance of this cycle, I would definitely encourage you to do it, particularly if you've been studying. Um, I know it's another yet another thing to do, but it, it does move the needle. So I would I would recommend that you consider it. So, you know, those are just a couple of ways that um, you can think about extracurricul extracurriculars. They're in all of these categories, all of these opportunities for you to kind of get your hands into, um, you know, working with people and leading and showing, um, you know, showing resilience, showing um, all of the things that business schools are looking for in a candidate. So um, one thing to, to additionally think about do not think it's too late. So if you're applying in round one and you start volunteering in August, doesn't show great, It's but it's January. So starting now, you have plenty of time. Jump into something now and um, you know, look at what some of the options are in your community for you to get involved. Step up at work, look for opportunities beyond, as I mentioned, beyond the sort of daily. Um, mentor a summer intern, right? They always need a hand. Um, lean into those hobbies. So back to the creative piece, you know, think about volunteering at a museum if you love art. Um, think about teaching an art class. Lots of lots of different things that you can do related to the hobbies. Um, and then taking a class. So if, you know, if you're changing careers, you know, think about particular, uh, think about um, taking a course that might help. Um, one thing that I recommend to my clients is they're you know, they're looking at round one is, is there a course that they wish that they had done just a little bit better, um, you know, in, in their undergraduate experience, now would be the time to take that course. Um, and that just demonstrates, again, more commitment, more interest, and all of those, you know, those special qualities that um, the top schools are looking for in candidates. So that is all I have about extracurriculars. I'd love to answer any questions that you have, um, if there are any out there. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So um, for Japanese people, the extracurricular activity is not familiar with because there is no, um, no need for them to get into their college, uh, college admission. And in my image, uh, the extracurricular activity must be or um, sometimes be nonprofit, but mm. It's acceptable to do some work related or business uh, things or extra activity, curricular activities. Yes, absolutely. I think some of those opportunities are um, are great to showcase the commitment to the organization in a way that volunteerism doesn't. So it's amazing to to be a volunteer in a not for profit, but I love seeing a client who 
you know, has really dug into the culture and supporting the culture of their organization. Um, for instance, I'm thinking about a young woman who um, her her organization did not have um, a DEI committee at all. Um, and this was like a year and a half ago, right? So this is post 2020, this is post COVID. This is, it's sort of table stakes at this point for business schools to have, or for um, companies to have a, a committee that is, um, you know, committed to making sure that there's, you know, equity and diversity and inclusion across the board. And she just decided to start it. Um, so she went to her supervisor and said, this is my plan. This is what I'd like to do. This is what I need in terms of a budget. Um, and she got it done. So I think anytime you see a gap in an organization, and I think it's on this generation to do this, right? Like that's what the, that's what I, one of the things I love about the, the generation that's coming up now is you all are not afraid to say there's a gap here and no one else is filling it. So I'm raising my hand and I'll fill it. Um, and so doing that, like that's, that's a really great um, way to impress an admissions committee. So yes, within the organization is great. So, so, so when, when the applicant decide uh, what extracurricular activity to choose, this, that should be very strategic, not only, oh, I, 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 I uh, came up with the thought that, that, that some volunteer activity, but that should be strategic to showcase their strengths or their character for admission committee. You know, I think that it's it's less about being strategic and more about what are you what do you love, what are you passionate about, what mm -hmm. what are you interested in, and if you dive into that, um, the rest of it will follow. It's it's mm -hmm. more about representing yourself in a way that's authentic and doing something that you love, um, because ultimately you'll be asked about it a lot. Someone will say, "Well, why did you do that?" And if you say well, I did it because I thought it would show well on my resume, right? It's, we've missed the point. But if you say, I love, uh, you know, I want to work in in the mental health space um, mm -hmm. as an extracurricular because X, Y, and Z, um, mm -hmm. then there's a story there. And anytime you get a chance to tell your story, you mm -hmm. must. Um, so picking something that aligns with your story gives you an in, it gives you that opportunity to talk more about your story, so. Oh, interesting. So they, it is important to uh to show their very honest feelings yes absolutely mm, thank you yeah so um if there is an applicant without extra curricular activity mm -hmm. showcase in their mba application how do you advise on them how do you start with a conversation with the client regarding yeah curricular activities yeah, absolutely. I mean, so that's happened before. I mean, that's, you know, if someone um, from from your um, group comes to us and says, I don't, I have nothing, mm -hmm. um, that's okay. So for the first thing you need to do is understand that you will still get into a great business school. So um, having that recognition that it's okay and that, that, you know, knowing that there's no perfect applicant out there, there's no, no um, client who has, you know, a 780, all the extracurriculars, a 4.0 from Yale. I mean, there's just, that doesn't exist. Um, there's no unicorn out here. So know that it's okay. Um, what I would say is I would want to have a conversation and really dig into the to the hobbies. Mm -hmm. So really understanding what are the things that you're interested in? What do you do outside of work? Um, sometimes I'll have clients who don't have anything because they work in a job where they work 75 hours a week. There's just no way. I mean, they're they're like trying to sleep and eat um, and that's it. And so that makes sense. In a case like that, I have them um, speak about what they want to contribute and how they'll be engaged in their essays and in their interviews. So we talk a lot about, um, you know, the various groups, the ways they'll contribute, what they'll bring to the community. Not only will they be in a group, but how will they behave in the classroom? What kind of conversation will they bring? What is their work experience? You know, what is that 75 hours of work per week? What is that going to bring um, to them as, as a classmate? And how will they contribute to the discussion in a way that's powerful? So I want them to talk a lot about that. And, and that's how we get to that 
It's not the perfect fix, but I would say, look, you can't go back in time and change things, but you can talk about and highlight the things that really do matter and that, um, you know, that are real and that, that are ways that you can impact the community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there is a question from. Sure. Uh, yes. So um, if I have, have not started any extracurricular activities yet, should I spend about a year doing them before applying for MBA? That's a great question. So I would love to know more. My question would be, um, you know, are you right out of undergrad? And and if yes, then I would say yes. Spend spend time doing, you know, doing some extracurriculars, building up that component of your background, get some of that work experience, because as you know, that average work experience is about, you know, four to five years. Mm -hmm. If you are asking me that question and you're at that, you know, that that um, the application round, the round one application um, and a matriculation in fall of 25 means that you're in that five year to six year mark, then I would say, no, don't spend a year, start today. I mean, get mm -hmm. online, look at, look within your community, talk to your boss, think about all the ways that we've just discussed for you to get involved right away. So um, it just depends on where you are in the cycle. Mm, so it's depends on the timing mm -hmm. and the, the age of the- That's right. That's right. And one more question is the, sure. the reason for choosing extracurricular activity to what extent it is important that the reason is important to in, in the application. So the reason that they chose that, that the um, particular, they, they, yeah. The, the specific activities. Uh, yeah, I think it's really important. Um, so one of the things that ends up happening throughout the admissions process is you will be asked your story thousands of times, more times than you can imagine, by current students, by alumni, um, by your boss, by, I mean, you may run into the dean of the business school and say, I'm visiting the school and they'll say, what's your story? So you have to have um, excitement and passion behind what you're talking about, whether it's your career, whether it's the sports that you play, whether it's the arts that you do, or it's the volunteerism that you're engaged in. And so if you can't speak about it in a way that um, conveys warmth and excitement and passion, and you don't have a really good reason as to why you're doing that one particular thing, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I think it, it, what it does is it flags a question in their mind. Like, why are they doing that? And what we never want is to have them have a question. We want to answer all their questions before they've asked them. And so, you know, you being able to say, well, I'm doing this because, you know, I'm involved in this organization because my mom was passionate about education and um, I decided to volunteer in the education space for that reason. You know, there has to be a why behind it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the next question is not about the extracurricular activities, but that's the, okay. Um, campus visit. So uh, campus visit. In Japan, oh, in Japan, some some applicants are thinking of campus visit for 2025 intake. This yes. Is so do, do you think campus visits are yeah, they're a little bit weird question, but they are important in the application process? That's a great question. I do. Mm -hmm. I realize that I'm saying that um, and you're in Tokyo. So I, I get that this it's not like me flying from Charlotte to Chicago, which is an hour and 15 minute flight. It's a huge investment of time, energy, money, the whole thing. Um, if you can... Um, and if you can do it now, I think it's important. And here's here's why. Um, number one, it gives you a really good understanding of what it feels like to be on that campus. And for anyone who's um, you know on this call who visited a few campuses during their undergraduate experience, there was one that you walked onto campus and said, "No, I'm out of here. Like these are not my people. This is not. Th there's nothing here um, that that I connect with." it's important for you to interview these schools in the same way that they're interviewing you. And a campus visit is the best way to do that. You can get the information or, or a lot of information virtually. Um, but I think when it comes to a decision like this and an investment that the, that is this large, 
financially from a time standpoint, the opportunity cost of, of not working for those two years, you know, there's a big difference between living in Chicago in January and, and living in California in January. So, so stepping onto those campuses and understanding what that feels like, um, who those people are, I think it's really important. So to the extent that you can do it, I, I would highly recommend doing it. Mm. And during the campus visit, uh, what should you recommend to do the applicants? Of course, they can attend an event or talk mm -hmm. to an admission or current student or other, anything else do you recommend? Yep. Okay. So the first thing I would recommend that you do is reach out to, so for, I'm going to take Booth as an example, but this is very standard across all top business schools. Most, um, Booth has what's called country captains. So they will have someone, a group of students from just about every country in the world who are currently attending the program. Their emails are listed on their website. I would reach out to them. That's the first thing I would do um, to say, you know, I'm looking to apply in round one. Um, I'm interested in starting in fall of 25. I would love to get on a call with you and talk about your experience, ask you questions, et cetera. So that's the first thing that you should do because you have one really great common uh, thing in common, which is, you know, your country of origin. So that's number one. Number two, you, you hop online, you find out what their events are. So all of them have classroom visits. Some of them only do them on certain days of the week. Um, so make sure you're aware of that. And they're usually about a half a day program. Um, you'll, you'll attend a class, you'll get to know some students, you'll probably have like breakfast or lunch or something with students, um, you know, attend that class, you get a tour of the building, um, and, and then you'll be on your way. Um, some schools have, so Booth used to have this event um, that I used to run called Booth Live, and it was a larger event. It was a full day event for visitors. Um, and so there would be, you know, a couple hundred students, prospective students who would come to that. So I would really dial into what what their offerings are in the spring. And they're, I mean, they're all back on campus now. So this is kind of the ideal time to do it. Um, so reaching out to, to someone who's at the school, who is from your home country, figuring out when those visit dates are, um, those are probably the, the top two things that I would do. And then the third, this is like a pro tip. The third thing I would do is, for instance, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, a lot of these schools have um, specific centers that, uh, like an entrepreneurship center, the folks who work in those entrepreneurship centers, they love to talk to prospective students, but perspectives never reach out to them because they just don't know that they should, or they can, or they're allowed to. Um, so when you're on campus, if you're interested in entrepreneurship or marketing or whatever the case may be, social entrepreneurship, um, see if you can sneak into that center and just pop in and say, hi, I'm, you know, a prospective student, I'm here to visit campus. I would love to talk to you about my ideas and hear what you guys do in the center. So that's just a little pro tip that I would, I would definitely recommend doing because it gives you a great sense. And then all of this, the campus visit, all of this not only helps you know the school better, but it's going to help you write amazing essays because when they say, why Booth, you'll have a litany of reasons, all reasons that are concrete that you know, it's not secondhand information. It's not from a website. It's, I was there. I know what it looks like. This is why I want to come to your school. Okay. Thank you. So they mm -hmm. can actually really see the campus and the center and right. the, the class. Uh, yes. Really, and they can show their uh, experience in their essay. Right. Right. Thank you. Um so actually, we are going campus visit with some clients this at uh, the end of this month. Oh, good. Where yeah. are you? Where yeah, are you I going? Will, I will fly to United States um, from east to west. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, so Boston, New York. Yeah. This time, uh, unfortunately, I I will not go to Chicago, but New York, Boston, and some other schools. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, so you're coming in January. I hope you have all of the down feathers around you, Emmy, because. Uh, yeah. So the, <laughs> the, the weather is very uh, cold. So minus, uh, yeah. more cold in Japan. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the next question, I think the last question is about the GPA. Okay. So GPA is very um big <laughs> issue in Japan. There is lots of Africans con concerning about their GPA. Mm -hmm. so how as an admission view, how do you how do you view a uh, low GPA? Also, I think it depends on the background or reason for not so high GPA. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I think um so it's definitely not the end of at the end of the world. I I really don't believe that. I think especially when you pair it with a high GMAT score um, and an explanation. So the thing that you you mustn't do is submit your application with no explanation to the low GPA. There's a reason, just tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. um, because the thing that, that I love about this business is that we're all human beings. Everyone knows that like, there's some reason that you bombed your freshman year. It, it could be that you just were completely unprepared for the balance and figuring out when you can play and when you can study. Um, it could be you got sick, you were injured in sports. There there are a million reasons why a student underperforms. And so explaining it is helpful. When you have that low GPA, do everything you can to get your GMAT score up as high as it can go. And that means enlisting the help of a tutor. Um, the other thing that you would do, so for instance, if you scored, you know, uh, it, you know, in undergraduate, you took econ or finance or some business related course and got a, you know, you failed it or you got a D or even a C. I would take an extension course like a UC Berkeley course in that same subject to showcase that you, you know, there was an issue. You have clearly, you know, you've, you can demonstrate that you're able to, um, you know, perform in a rigorous classroom experience. And so that's sort of a way around it. So it's, you know, one of the things that that is helpful when you hire a consultant is to have this conversation and say, okay, tell me everything. What's what happened? Um, let me look at the, the transcripts. Let me understand the context. Let me give you recommendations. So it's, you know, write it, write an optional essay. It's take an extension course um, and do really well on that GMAT. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, is this all for the question? Thank okay. But so for the impressive discussion. Some My pleasure. Uh, regarding extracurricular activities, some people might wonder how to make themselves more appealing for MBA admission rather than their honest feelings. But uh, after today's session, I believe it's more important to act on they are passion and honest feeling rather than very like strategic or how to. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah. definitely. Yes. Yep, definitely. Yes. It was so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So could you share a comment for future MBA applicants in the end? Share one recommendation. Yeah, one recommendation or a sentence. Oh, gosh. Um, Aside from working with a great consultant, I would say be your most authentic self. I mean, I think that that uh, that is the way to shine is show who you really are in this process um, and don't try to give them what you think they want to hear. Give them what's real and what's true about you. And when you do that, um, the right school will will become the fit for you. Thank you. Sure. Um, sorry to cut in, but there is um, one additional question from us. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. So what factors should be considered in terms of recommendation papers? What are the admission looking at through those recommendation letters? What practices, is it what practices should they think about with recommendations? Uh, yeah. So okay. what, yeah, what factors should be included or considered when you ask for Got it. To your boss. Good. Got it. Okay. A couple things. Um, 
So business schools are really looking for at least one recommendation from someone within your current company and ideally your current boss. Um, I know that sometimes can be a little bit uncomfortable. So when you think about the timing of it, you know, you could, you could wait until July for round one to ask your current boss, but they really are looking for that um, perspective from someone who has supervised you directly either right now or very, very recently. Um, so that's ideal. They don't really want an academic, um, you know, so they don't want a faculty member who, you know, you had for a senior thesis. They're, they're looking for the professional recommendations. Um, one thing that I cannot stress enough is do not write your own recommendations. If if you ask someone to to do a letter for you, tell them that, you know, all you're going to be doing is putting their email address into the system. The system will ping them with the questions. Um, they don't have to sit down and write a letter from scratch. Um, if they come back to you and say, yes, I'd be happy to, if you could just write it for me, just find someone else. You you cannot. This The school will find out. They will pitch your application. So please, please, please do not write your own letters of recommendation. So ask a current boss, ask someone who really knows your work very well. Um, those are really the the kind of the biggest recommendations that I have. And then have a conversation with them about the things that you want them to highlight and lean into. Um, that's that's my other recommendation. You know, if, you're, uh, if your GPA is low or if you don't have a lot of extracurriculars on your resume, you want them to talk a lot about all of the contributions that you've made um, to the community, the professional community, right? That's that's a great opportunity. And one of the things that we do at Stacey Blackman is we talk about risk, um, potential risk to your application and how to mitigate those risks. And that would be one that I would say, you know, um, the risk is not a lot of extracurriculars. How do we mitigate it? We have your recommenders really talk about your contributions to the community and their recommend recommendations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah, I, I, I got very, uh, very un understandable. That makes sense for your application. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, let me use Japanese a little bit, please. はい、ということで、あの特にですね、ちょっと,、えー、と日本で今これを動画を見ていただいている方もいると思うんですけれども、あのアプリケーションですね、今、アルファとステイシー・ブラックマン、今日はあはメグさんに来ていただきましたけれども、冒頭に申し上げた通り、まあ、シカゴの,あのシカゴブースのアドミッションも、ね、されて、もう何千件もアプリケーション、アドミッションの立場で見てこられたメグさんのお話で、あの本当に自分のやりたいこととかをこう表現する、でもそれもやっぱり戦略というかね、あのさっきおっしゃってたレコメンデーションではこういう面を見せてとかエッセイでこういうこと書いてるから他の部分をこれで補ってとかねそういったことをもう全部最初からご相談もできますしあとはもうすでにアプリケーションあるよとかエッセイ今日はエクストラカリキュラーのお話でしたけれどもエッセイとか推薦状とかあのもうできてるんだけど見てほしいとかそういうこともできますのでもちろんアルファでもあの、ね、日本人のカウンセラーもいますけれども、もうがっつりトップスクール借りたいとか、アドミッションの視点をね、ぜひ取り入れて、さらに自分のアプリケーション強くしていきたいなっていう方は、もう本当におすすめですので、ぜひサポートしてほしいなとか、ちょっと相談してみたいなという方は、無料相談からご連絡いただければと思います。これからも、このステイシー・ブラックマンコンサルティングの,、ね、アドあのカウンセラーの方と、あのいろんな MBA のティップスとか、学校ごとのエッセイの解説とかね、していこうと思いますので、こういうのが聞きたいよっていうのがあれば、それも無料相談の方に入れていただければと思います。So、thank you very much for your time. A very impressive session today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, thank you for everyone to show to listen our YouTube video. Thank you. Bye.